If your franchisee is new to Square, they'll want to go to the Square signup page to create an account. They can enter their email, password, choose the locale of their business, then agree to the terms and continue. On the following page, Square will ask for the business name and the type of business. By selecting Start Using Square, the account owner will have a dashboard created for them. Prior to allowing the account to start processing payments, Square requires additional information. Next to the Get Approved to Accept Payments text, click Get Started and follow the instructions on screen to proceed. Once the onboarding flow to allow Square to approve the account for payments has been completed, click on your business name in the top right, then click Account Settings. On the left side of the page, click Business Information. While we won't be covering all of the options under the Business Information dropdown, we encourage all Square account owners to review each option and make configurations necessary for your business. We'll start with Locations. Every Square account is created with a default location profile that takes on the address that you use during the onboarding flow. If you populated the business address during the onboarding flow, you'll see the address appear here under the address column. If you haven't yet added your business address or would like to confirm or make updates to the business address, click on the location, then update the address fields. When finished, click Save. A Square account is permitted to have more than one location on the dashboard as long as the locations all share the same EIN. If that is the case, you can add a second location using the Create Location button above. Follow the steps on the Create Location screen to proceed. In my example, I'll keep the account set up with just one location and we'll proceed to the Bank Accounts tab. If you created more than one location on the previous step, you'll see your locations appear under the All Locations section and each one will have an option to link an account. To link an existing bank account, we'll click Add External Bank Account, then choose Link Your Bank. Square provides the option to connect your account using Plaid or entering your bank account information manually. Once you've added your bank account, be sure to visit the Transfers tab. This will allow you to set the schedule at which your bank account is paid out to for a given location. The Receipts tab, below the Transfers tab, will allow you to add an image as well as colors to your receipts that are handed out in person. We'll review the Sales Taxes page together. Select Set Up Your Taxes. A single Square account can support multiple tax rates, meaning a single item can either be taxed twice or different items can receive different tax rates. For our purposes, I'll select same tax rate for all items and will apply a 7% tax. Be sure to check with an accountant to ensure that the tax rate you're setting up at the dashboard is correct. <coughs> On the Create Tax page, we'll title our tax, and then we'll apply the rate. In the Locations dropdown, you may only have one location. If you do, you can just add the tax rate to that specific location. If you have multiple tax rates that may be in different cities or states, you may want to uncheck one of the locations that the tax should not apply to. When you're finished, click Done, then proceed down to the Tax Application field. Because I'd like all my items to be the same tax rate, I'll leave the selection as All Current and Future Taxable Items at Selected Locations. If I wanted to choose specific items that would receive the tax rate, I would select Select Items, then I would choose my items. For now, we'll leave the default selection, then we'll click Save. Now that we've set the sales tax rate in the dashboard, any items that you add to cart in the point of sale that meet the criteria of the sales tax will automatically have the rate that you set applied. If you're using online ordering, the tax rate that you set in the dashboard will also be pulled in 
so that transactions made online will also receive the same rate. By this point, you should have already been invited to join the franchise on Square. If you haven't received this invitation just yet, work with your franchisor to ensure that you receive this email. When you do receive the email, click Join Now. You'll be taken to a Square sign-in page where you can enter the credentials for your account. On the confirmation page, where you'll link your Square account to your franchisor's organization, you'll see a section for Franchise Suite Subscription Plan. These are products that your franchisor has required you to subscribe to in order to become part of their organization. When ready, click Accept Invite. The confirmation page will indicate that you've successfully linked your account to your franchisor. The franchisor onboarding flow should automatically redirect you to the pricing and subscriptions page where you can activate the subscriptions that were proposed in the previous step. If you're not on this page by default, or if you've clicked around and need to get back to this page, click on your business name settings in the top right, then account settings. Then on the left, click business information and pricing and subscriptions. To officially activate your subscriptions for the products that are pending, as indicated on the right hand side of the page, click activate subscriptions. You'll receive one final order summary for what you're subscribing to, and then at the bottom, you can add a payment method. Subscribing to the products required by the franchisor will ensure that no interruption occurs in any of the subscription services. So far, we've completed several steps. We've created your Square account, approved you to accept payments, configured several settings within your account, like locations, bank account, and sales tax. We've connected your account to the franchisor organization, and we've enabled pricing. Now, we'll handle the steps to get you set up with your point of sale. Because you've connected your Square account with your franchisor's organization, items will be shared to you automatically from the franchisor. To access these items, click on items on the left-hand side of the page. If you do not see any items in this view, reach out to your franchisor to have them shared with you. The items in your account can now be used with your point of sale. Let's configure that next. As part of your Square setup, you should have already ordered or received hardware. To configure your hardware, and connect it to your Square dashboard, click Settings on the left-hand side of the page, then click Device Management. What we're doing with this step is setting it up so that the device that you have in hand, whether it be a register or an iPad, can process transactions that connect back to this Square dashboard. The first step is to create a device code. On the right side of the page, click Create, Enter the amount of device codes you'd like to create, then click Next, then choose the point of sale. If you signed up for a Square for Restaurants subscription through a previous step, be sure to select Square for Restaurants. This will give you access to additional features geared specifically for restaurant businesses that need to process high volume transactions. If you're not using Square for Restaurants, select Square Point of Sale. For our example, we'll be setting up a Square for Restaurants point of sale. Then we'll choose Countertop and Counter Service as the sign setting. We'll give the device code a name and we'll click Create. On the confirmation page, you'll see that there's a code at the bottom. The code at the bottom of the screen should be input into the device itself in order to build a connection between the device and the dashboard. We'll hop over into a mock register to type in the code and build the connection. If you're using a square register, you won't need to choose an app on the device itself. If you're using an iPad, you'll need to download the Square for Restaurants app 
which has an orange background. The regular Square Point of Sale app, if you're not using restaurants, can be downloaded and has a white background. To connect the register, click on Sign In on your registered device or on your iPad app. Instead of using the email or phone number to sign in, we'll select Use a Device Code. For the device code, we'll type in the same code that's listed on the Square dashboard page for the device code that we created. Once it's been typed in, click Sign In. The sign-in is successful if you see a page to enter a passcode. If it's not successful, you may need to return to the dashboard, click Done on the device code creation page, and create a new device code. The Square for Restaurants app requires a passcode for access, and every team member has a specific passcode tied to their account. To access the team members, and to provide passcodes to each of your employees, click Team. You'll see all of the employees that you have on your account on this page. By clicking onto an individual employee, you can show their passcode in the Permissions section and share it with them in person. This passcode will be what's used to access the device. If you're using the regular Square Point of Sale app, individual passcodes may not be required. You can configure those settings in the security section of the application. When you unlock the device with your passcode, you'll be brought to a page that either has a menu already pre-built for you, or will request that you set up your menu. The menu design on this page may be configured at a franchisor level and is copied to your account automatically. If that is not the case and you do not see a menu when you sign in, you'll need to create a menu individually on your own Square account. On your Square dashboard, click Items on the left side of the page, then click Menus. Click Create a Menu, and I typically choose to build the menu manually. Title the menu, then click Save. The easiest way I find to build the menu is to click Edit Point of Sale Layout and then Add Items to the Grid. You can either add items directly or you can add a display group that you can nest items within. For example, if I choose Drinks as my display group, I can click this group and add additional items within it. If I go to my items, then choose my drinks category. I could put all the items that are listed under drinks category under my drinks display group. You can also add shortcuts like quick actions right to the display grid on your point of sale. For example, I can do a shortcut for the calculator as well as to adding a customer to the check. These items will be in your grid display and you could change the layout for how you'd like for them to appear on the point of sale. I've added another category as well as a few shortcut items. When I'm finished with the menu display, I'll click Save, and I'll see that the menu is now populated under this menu dropdown. You can also have more than one menu if you'd like to switch between the menus available. Now that we've created a menu in the Square dashboard, it will automatically appear on your register as long as it's signed into the same account and location you created the menu for. You can see the display groups are now available as well as the items and the shortcuts. To begin building a check, simply click on the item, then choose the modifier, if available, and add the item to check. With the device connected to the register or iPad and the menu created, you're almost done completing your setup for processing transactions. Your business may either be using printed receipts and kitchen printers or a kitchen display system. 
To configure a printer, the first thing you'll do is select from profiles, then click printer profiles. You'll click create a profile, and we'll title this kitchen printer. The purpose of printer profiles is to be able to reuse the same settings and behavior from one printer on another. If we want our kitchen printer to print automatically for all orders, the first thing we would do is enable in-person order tickets. You can further configure which categories are printed here. In addition, you want to enable online and kiosk order tickets so that any online orders are printed if you're using online ordering. If you enable this setting, you'll also want to enable automatically print new orders so that you don't need to manually trigger the printer. Again, you can set which categories you'd like to print here. Now that we've created the printer profile in the dashboard, we'll want to actually connect the printer and assign the profile. Click more, then settings, and go to hardware settings. Scroll down on this page on the right, then click printers. Select connect printer and search for your available printer. Once selected, return to the previous page and give your printer a title. Save, then assign the profile. The profile is what we created earlier to only print kitchen tickets. Once saved, your printer will be ready to use. If you're using a kitchen display system instead of a printer, select Create from the Device Codes page, then Create a Device Code. Instead of choosing Point of Sale, this time we'll select Kitchen Display System, and we'll select Prep. We'll give our device code a title, and then click Create. We'll need to download the Square KDS app on the App Store and then enter the device code listed below to connect. On the Kitchen Display app, enter the device code that was generated on your dashboard. When you've successfully entered the code, click Sign In. The application will take you through a setup flow where you can enter settings that fit your business requirements. Once you've completed the initial configuration for your KDS app, you'll be taken to a blank screen that will begin to populate once you receive orders. We've now set up menus, devices, printers, or kitchen display systems. As a result, you can now collect payments from your customers. If your franchisor is running a loyalty program, you can enable loyalty from your point of sale device. Click more, then settings, and scroll down on the left panel to loyalty. Click Enable Loyalty on this device to display the loyalty screen after checkout. If your franchisor is running a gift card program, you'll want to be able to sell gift cards from your point of sale. Right above Loyalty, click Gift Cards. Then enable Sell e-gift cards in store. Work with your franchisor to reconcile gift cards that are purchased at one location and redeemed at another.